Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 27th of August, 2015. Well, let's take a look at what's going on here with Erica. A few things I want to point out before we look at the structure. This is the island of Dominica, and it was hammered today by very heavy rainfall that has unfortunately resulted in the loss of life and some very terrifying torrents of rain raging down the streets there as this convective bomb went off earlier, dumping just mesmerizing amounts of rainfall. Six, eight, ten inches in some locations I've been reading on social media reports. Not good, and it just goes to show that tropical storms in and of themselves can be deadly, and they can have some serious impacts. And for these people here on this one small island of the Eastern Caribbean, Erica was there. It only takes one for this hurricane season and for those people that were killed today that is especially true and uh, my heart goes out to them because what a devastating thing to have happen especially that terrifying flash flooding I can only imagine and uh, that should be a lesson for uh, over here in Puerto Rico where we also have elevation changes like we do on Dominica some hills and mountains down here uh, some of this area uh, in fact, a good deal of it, volcanic in origin. So you do have these sort of steep hillsides, and Puerto Rico is no exception. And if we get one of these convective bombs like what we see going off right here, happening over Puerto Rico, then it could be a real problem. So heads up there. Now looking at the structure of Erica, this is the low-level center of circulation. Almost looks like a little eye right there, doesn't it? And you can see that deep thunderstorms are trying to go off just to the east of that circulation center. Once again, you can also see that there is a decent feathering of the clouds and a spreading out of the clouds in a clockwise fashion. Outflow trying to develop. But across the top of Erica, we still have some fairly strong upper level winds. And that's helping to sort of decouple the system and not allow it to stack vertically we're not seeing any of these well-developed bands wrap in and that sort of curled up shrimp look. And you'll know it if you see it. Uh, and it's just not there yet. It's trying. We definitely don't have an open wave of low pressure. Some of the thought processes the last couple of days suggested that Erica could just degenerate into an open wave of low pressure, uh, sort of an inverted trough, if you will, as it moves on off to the west and west-northwest. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Now, with this center uh, kind of jumping around, it's hard to say whether or not it will clear the island of Hispaniola over here in the next day or so. We'll have to wait and see. If it goes right over it, well, that has a huge implication, as mentioned in the discussion from the Hurricane Center, on the track and the intensity of Erica down the road. Looking at the San Juan radar <clears throat> so far, and please pardon my summertime cold, very inconvenient time to have one. I think if I can get eight hours of sleep tonight, it'll pretty much be gone. Tomorrow, I should just put Erica aside, go to sleep, and just let everything be. Get up tomorrow, feel 100% better. At least I do have a voice. Uh, so looking at Puerto Rico, here's the San Juan radar site. And a few scattered showers, the deepest of the thunderstorm activity out of range at the moment. But that will be moving in. So you folks in Puerto Rico, heads up. Uh, I think the lessons learned today from Dominica can be applied here. Make sure you pay attention, especially since a lot of this could be happening over the nighttime hours. So the future of Erica. I talked about this on my blog today. Fairly easy to understand. I think overall you can see the uh, outflow here, these feathered clouds. But you can also see, and this is very interesting to me, right in here this little channel where the winds are spreading apart. You see that? I mean, it's as plain as day. I'm not making it up. The angle increases here between these lines. We don't have it all just parallel. So there's just a little bit of what we call difluent flow over the top of Erica right now where the air is spreading out, and that's helping to keep this thing alive in the face of 20 knots of shear, 30 knots farther to the southwest. But that's uh, that little core right there coming across, that could be pretty strong as Erica moves through, but it's survived <clears throat> uh, so far, so we'll see what happens. You know, we've been talking about this often, that if it can get up into this region here, 
the environment looks a lot more favorable and we could have ourselves a hurricane approaching Florida. Now this is the very latest in what we call the spaghetti plots and this has just got to be maddening for people. Uh, the National Hurricane Center certainly and I won't say maddening for them because they are experts at handling this kind of stuff but for the public and maybe for some of the television meteorologists out there that have to convey very uncertain information to people it can be maddening because people want a definitive answer you can't blame them for that in the least and this latest run clearly puts Florida Peninsula back in play and then there's also a group of models believe it or not that are headed towards the southeast Gulf of Mexico uh, I mean you just can't get any more wild than this and then you have a few camps you know, a couple of models here uh, on the east side of what we call the guidance envelope suggesting a trek up towards Cape Hatteras but a majority of the more reliable guidance comes right up here towards Florida and then just off the east coast and we shall see right we've seen this for the last few days there's no real easy way to de define what's going to happen I mean we know that a nice little ridge of high pressure is going to build out here Erica would go around the side of it so to speak but so much of this depends on how strong Erica is a weaker shallower system in the atmosphere is more likely to take a westerly path like this maybe into the Gulf of Mexico and I mean even this isn't out of the question a stronger vertically stacked higher into the atmosphere reaching Erica would take a more northerly path maybe up towards the Carolinas or so it would seem so track does have an influence uh, I'm sorry let me reverse I wish I could erase that intensity uh, has a big bearing on track I could have just said track sometimes is very reliant on intensity and I would have had it right so yes the intensity of Erica can affect the track <clears throat> so we're gonna have to watch that very closely now as if this wasn't um, I don't know what the word is it, it's not disheartening it's just, because there's no solution here that just is obvious it makes it frustrating now look at this uh, the intensity guidance very interesting here kind of flat now for most of the guidance over the next 72 hours really not becoming a hurricane until about 90 hours or so on most of the reliable guidance but then you have some of these models that just go hog wild even one of them making it a category 5 and which model is that that's the GFDL based models I do believe some of the interpolated models coming off of the GFDL <clears throat> and some of those um, I was trying to see if I could pick them out I think they're sitting up here somewhere so that's the more easterly model tracks they keep this over the very warm Gulf Stream and the Western Atlantic uh, heat content and so those ramp it up into a very strong hurricane uh, some of the other models really ramp it up late in the period it just depends on where Erica is located when that happens and then you've got this sort of weird nonsense where it just drops off so maybe this had some land interaction in here so a little bit of divergence in the models but overall I think you can see that the trend is up over time now this map is just nuts let me try to zoom in on it here this is what we call the GFS ensemble spread and basically this is the operational model of the GFS which is shown in here is the AVNO and it's buried in here as the red line and then you have 20 other members of the ensemble group with different variables put in to give a different output so it's kind of like playing what if 20 different times with the GFS global model and right here is the Florida Peninsula look at how many of these ensemble members are now heading into the Gulf of Mexico towards Louisiana and Mississippi you also have quite a few of them that are sitting out here uh, with a hard right hand turn and sort of the Florida Peninsula stuck in between this just tells me we are nowhere near a final solution yet for Erica over the next several days and then you've got this one member ensemble member number 18 says that Erica will be on a heck of a ride all over the North Atlantic uh, between now and the next 10 days 
So, you know, that's a several thousand mile, this one up here near Chicago. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And it's hard because we can't come in and say, all right, folks, in such and such location, time to get ready. Except, and I'm going to go back to this, I don't want to ignore what can happen through these islands through here. You're up next as the convective ups and downs continue. And we do know that that's pretty much a certainty that Erica will impact parts of the Caribbean still. So at least you have some sort of closure as to what to expect. But for the United States mainland and the Bahamas, not so much. Looking at Hawaii, Ignacio now in the Central Pacific area of responsibility for hurricane tracking, I think out of Honolulu. Uh, maybe Hilo, but I think it's Honolulu. Uh, looking like it'll go to the north. Now, I say that, let me back up. This is from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, but that was the um, early morning update out there. Now that it has moved past, and it will be moving past 140 degrees of longitude here, it'll move into the Central Pacific area of responsibility. Confusing? Yep, but that's the way it goes. Anyway, it looks like it's going to hopefully pass just to the north of the Hawaiian island chain, but remember... Um, the uh, cone of uncertainty is there for a reason, and as they say up here, hazardous conditions can occur outside of this cone of uncertainty. So you folks in Hawaii have been sort of shot at this year by several different cyclones coming your way, tropical cyclones, none of which have hit yet. Hopefully that will remain the case. We'll watch that, and I'll keep talking about it on the blog and on the video update here. All right, well, that's it for me for today. I'll be... Uh, Posting another update on Erica in the blog, the regular text blog, if you will, on HurricaneTrack.com. And, of course, it gets published to our app, Hurricane Impact. If you don't have that app, now's a good time to get it from the App Store or Google Play. Two words, Hurricane Impact. And then, you know, tomorrow morning, another blog post and another video update. And we'll see what we see with Erica. It's going to be kind of a uh, hair-pulling experience over the next few days, unfortunately, I uh, wish I had better answers for you, but that's what I know. And anybody that tells you that they have it all figured out, uh, well, they're just kidding themselves. Have a good rest of your Thursday afternoon. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.